today was a good practice. Uh, it was obviously hot. Um, uh, had more cramping issues than, than what I was hoping we would, but uh, it was hot. I thought the kids fought through practice well. And, and uh, to start off, I thought we threw and caught the ball really well today um, for the first day. And, and uh, not a lot of errors, not a lot of balls on the ground. Uh, snaps from center to quarterback seem to be good. The MAs uh, were limited uh, with the veterans. Obviously, you, you're going to get some of that with the younger guys. But uh, all in all, I thought they fought through the weather well. Uh, had a great attitude all day, and I was, uh, was happy with the first practice. Well, what would you say to the experience first practice? I did early, Trey, and then I thought uh, that we got a little sloppy uh, somewhere around period 11, 12 in there, and probably went longer than what I wanted to, maybe went uh, probably four periods in there, and then I thought uh, we regrouped um, and, and did a nice job. You know, we're wearing skull caps with everybody on the team now besides the quarterback and the kickers, punters, and, and snappers uh, on special – on the specialist part of it. Uh, I think that takes a little bit of time to get used to as well. I think it's hotter on your head. Um, and uh, so I think that may have had something to do with it as well. Um, we, we wore those in the spring, but it certainly wasn't the same temperature as what it was today. But I felt like we were crisp. Uh, um, we threw and caught the ball to answer your question well. Anything jump out as far as competitiveness or a big play or – an individual, something you didn't expect. You know, I, I thought we took care of each other. I thought we competed. Um, you know, uh, Hudson Clark made a really nice uh, catch in the two-minute drill. Intercepted a ball with the, against the ones. Uh, intercepted it and understood to get on the ground. You know, there's no reason to do anything. Game's over at that point. Thought he made a great decision there. Uh, we did have some decisions on offense um, that that weren't very good in two minute. You know, we lost track of the down uh, with a quarterback uh, and then uh, uh, we didn't get out of bounds when we caught the ball uh, early in the drive. Uh, our situation today was 42 seconds. We needed a touchdown. We threw about an eight yard, uh, uh, just a stop route on the outside, which probably should have got, the, well, we should have got the ball out of bounds. I had to burn the timeout. So, those things are, are something we can certainly teach off of. We will. That's why we do two-minute. Not too concerned about it right now, but uh, we, we, we'll use it as a learning experience. Um, you know what it took to take the program from where you got it to where you, you finished last year. What, what, uh, what's it take to get maybe next level? Where, where can you all be better? Well, I think you have, to, you have to do everything you possibly can in preparation and those things, I think that's an obvious answer. You know, we have to become the best coaches that there is out there, and I, I have a great staff. Uh, but to win more than nine games, you, you, there's so many close games and, and situational football we have to be very, very good at. Uh, and I'm talking about third and one, some things that we didn't do well last year. I'm talking about two minute, which we did do well last year. I'm talking about four minute where we've got the lead and we need to complete the game, uh, those things are going to be determined how many wins you have in taking care of the football. And I thought we did a good job of taking care of the football until the two-minute uh, drive at the end of the game uh, on offense. And, and I thought the defense rallied around really well, ran well today, did a good, nice job. But those are the things to win more than that. Um, uh, it, it, first of all, you have to have you know a quarterback – that can lead you to that. But, you know, we have one that led us to nine last year. So we've got the quarterback situation. We just got to be better in situational football. So when those situations come up a game, we win those more than we lose them. And therefore, we can win a close game. We're going to have a lot of close games. That's just how it is in this league. Um, could, you, could you give an update on it? I think Henderson might have been in green. What's up with him? Yeah. And then, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Terry Wells is back out there. And Chase Larry. Um and and Chase, we, we just not in camp. He's healthy, just not in camp. And then um, uh, Marcus Henderson uh, has a little bit of a peck 
problem uh, that uh, we put him in the green. We'd like to not well, – he'll probably be out another week, guys, to be honest with you. Uh, nothing serious, but uh, certain serious enough that we need to t take care of him here at least for another week. It may be eight days for all I know. It may be ten. I don't know. But for at least we're, we're kind of dividing up practice a little bit and how we practice. We're going five in a row here. They'll get a break next Wednesday. Then we'll come back and do a Thursday, fr Friday scrimmage, Saturday. And then there, every day will be off on Sunday from then on out. And we're kind of breaking it up that way. Uh, so Henderson will start one of those. It'll be either he'll come back uh, uh, next Thursday or we'll wait and bring it back the following a week from this Monday. And Sam, um, how do you think Trey Knox has done, you know, continuing the transition tight end? I know he's put on some weight. Where do you think he's at with that move? And just what do you think about the depth behind him at the position overall? I think he's going to be fine. Um, uh, he's got to get in better shape. Uh, he's, I'm sure he's not used to carrying 245 pounds, uh, even though he had a good summer in the strength and conditioning program. Uh, you know how it's like anything. You guys remember whenever you transition from you athletes, it looks like we've got a room full of them. Uh, when you transition from – football and then went to basketball you were in shape for football and not necessarily for basketball it's just kind of the same way uh, when you're in your strength program as much as you simulate uh, position drills and all those stuff you, you know they're not wearing pads they're not wearing spiders they're not wearing a helmet uh, so I think Trey just got to get used to that a little bit and I think he'll be fine he's a good uh, he ran some really good routes today did a nice job blocking uh, Hudson Henry uh, uh, couldn't make it through practice today, so um, I, I just I think it's just conditioning uh, or whatever. I don't know exactly the reason yet. I haven't spoke with Dave yet on that. But uh, other than that, I thought Tyrus Tyrus Washington had a had a good day, and uh, Nathan Bax is a, a, a you can count on him, and that's kind of where we're at in the depth chart. Uh, you know, with it being uh, Knox, Henry, Bax, and then. Uh, Washington. Coach, uh, Jaden Wilson had a really good catch when we came yeah. in out there today. It's a touchdown about 70 yards. So yeah. How How is his summer in, in – well, it's one practice, but how did his summer – has he progressed pretty well this summer like you wanted him? He has. You know, I told him nobody knows who he is. You know, you do. Oh, thank you. But I said nobody knows who you are, bro. And if, if you want somebody to know who you are, you got to make – you got to do what he did at practice today. And uh, we've challenged him big time because he, athletically and length and those things, he's got all that. But he has to be uh, more consistent. I think he had a good day today as well as some other wideouts. What's Aaron Allen got to do at tight end to get on the field? I mean, to improve. What's, what's well, I think he's just young. He came off a severe knee injury, and that hurt him. And with the severe knee injury, he came in here, you know, closer to looking like a tackle than he would a tight end. And uh, he finally got the weight off, which helped his knee as well. Uh, his knee uh, healed up um, uh, fine now. Uh, but he just got to keep working. I mean, he's uh, he's probably five on the depth chart right now. And uh, uh, he just got to keep working. And he, he now he has a chance, to be honest with you, because he's in shape and, he, and his knee's fine. So he's got a chance. I, I could see him moving up that chart. Uh, because his high school film was really, really good high school film. Sam, I wanted to ask you about a couple of guys. First, Isaiah Nichols. What do you expect from him? This Love him. I mean, he's what, working what do you his think butt you off. Get from him, and then second, Jaquelin Crawford back from I guess that that leg injury. Just yeah, to get him back. You know, I thought Crawford did a nice job today, fighting through all that. You know, he. I don't know that he's he's been cleared. I don't know that he's a hundred percent. To be perfectly honest with you. Um, and then Nichols is valuable. I mean, Nichols is valuable to anybody we have on our team. I mean, he's he's a guy that uh, is, is a leader on our team uh, in recruiting. He helped us as, you know, he's a senior and helped us in recruiting. I mean, the guy's got a lot of value, but uh, more than anything, he's he's got value because he's a good football player. And, and uh, um, there is there is right now there's a significant difference between him and the next guy in. So one of your coaches sending players back quite a bit, saying 
everything you do, you got to do it right. How mm -hmm. much is, is today about setting those types of expectations? Oh, all the you? all the first days are about setting the tone of practice and how we do things. And I don't know if we do anything right. I don't. We believe in what we do, but we're gonna we're gonna. The expectations are we're going to do what we say the expectations are. I mean, it is what it is, and so I'm glad. I told the coaches I can't be the only guy, you know, last night in the in the expectation meeting that we had, I asked the coaches to listen to it too because I can't be the only guy out there that has some type of discipline, and I haven't been. Don't, don't get me wrong, I haven't been, but – I felt like our coaches really pushed our players through the practice today and, and uh, felt like our coaches did an out, outstanding job along with the players. Cody Kennedy talking to your offensive line a lot about their second step, having mm -hmm. a powerful second step. Can you kind of go more in depth on that? And, and then what did you think from that group as a whole today? Yeah, Cody's, Cody's better at blocking movement than I've ever been as a coach. Um, you know, I believe that your power comes in your second step. Uh, as a offensive line coach, I always taught near leg, near shoulder. I, I played defense, and everybody's saying your power comes from near leg, near shoulder. Well, uh, I taught offensive line play as your second step is your near leg, near shoulder. That's your contact. You're tackling a guy, just not you know, physically tackling him to the ground. So Cody believes that as well because he was my, you know, he's my GA and. That seemed to work in the past and things of that nature. What he does do, he sees things better than I did when I was a coach. He teaches it better uh, because we've really hurt people that want to move against us. Uh, we've hurt people where uh, a lot of times in my history that has been a problem for us. Coach, um, you talked about Isaiah Nichols and his leadership, and I was just thinking about, like, if you ask coaches if they could pick, I don't know, four leaders or something right up the middle, They'd probably pick a quarterback, and you've got that, and mm -hmm. a center would be mm -hmm. another good one. You got that, and safety, middle safety, Jalen mm -hmm. Catalan, and bumper pool, middle linebacker. Yeah. Uh, do you feel that way about about your team, like just having that leadership right down the middle, and guys that kind of see everything? Well, they can they can talk to both sides of the ball if they're you know to your point that you know you don't have a corner sitting way over here. He, it's hard for him to lead the, the other side of the ball if that makes sense. Um, I don't know. I just not thought of it that way. But uh, um, I do know this, that you better have a good center, and we have one. You better have a good quarterback. We have one. You better have a good running back. We have several. And then linebacker-wise, you know, with Bump coming back, that's huge for us that Bumper came back along with Dalton. Huge. Uh, it's going to allow us for Pooh and Crook and, you know, those guys, Manny Powell, those guys, Henley, to, to keep coming on. And uh, – I haven't really thought of it that way, but it makes a lot of sense. You mentioned Tyrus Washington earlier. What what do you like about him? What what excites you with him? He's competitive, and he's you know he's a big, strong athlete. He catches the ball well. He's got natural catching skills. Uh, I think you can split him out a little bit. He's got that kind of speed. I mean, he's not going to run. He's not going to run by a corner probably, but he's going to run by you know a nickel, a Sam linebacker, a Will linebacker. Um, but he's got the physical size. He's smart, and he's got he's got to want to about him. Uh, I just think he's a really good young player. Pretty happy with your artificial turf addition to the practice fields down there. You know, we haven't done a lot on that turf yet. Uh, we know it's got some coolant in it, or, or some sand in it, where it's not going to be quite as. And we've been out there. Our team has done some running on it uh, in the summer workout program. Uh, we went more into our hot uh, schedule today where we were going from indoors to outdoors. I'm not for sure that it wasn't better outside than it was inside, to be honest with you. Uh, we'll talk about that again, whether we want to just stay outside and do our two spots on the turf. But the kids really like it uh, from the summer. It's like maybe 20 degrees cooler instead of 20. Because you see the old stuff was like 20, 30 degrees yeah, hotter. Yeah, that's that really right. Like well, cooler? I think I think it's 20 degrees cooler than the old turf. Not necessarily, you know. If it was that way, I'd be I'd be over there laying down on it. <laughs> but <laughs> but I think it's probably 20 degrees cooler than the old turf was, That's which was was hot, hot. You know, so uh, I don't know. 
we'll try to get out on it possibly tomorrow if it's if it's the same temperature we'll probably stay out there tomorrow because I, I thought the breeze was better than I thought it was awful muggy in the indoor today uh, Sam, you, the other day I think you talked about Malik's improved his passing. Yeah. Well, yeah. What'd you think about that 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 pass? You Otis was asking you about. He really dropped yeah. it in nice. Look, he had some nice passes and drills outside. Just what would you think of his day passing? Well, Malik's he, he's obviously Im improved his accuracy, but he used to throw a ninety-five mile an hour fastball from me to Biddy. I mean, I mean, it just knocked a guy down as an uncatchable type of pass. He's really improved his touch, you know, I, I think. But more than anything, I think he's improved his confidence. You know, he's not thinking about where guys are going to be and he's throwing the ball faster than what he did before. Uh, but his accuracy has really, really uh, improved. I don't know, he probably got 15 to 20 uh, is what the goal was for today of him playing wide receiver snaps. We know we're straining him because he got every snap of of second team quarterback. Uh, however, we can always pull back on him, you know, once we feel, you know, how much we're going to play him out there. Uh, uh, he going to play somewhere. So uh, that those numbers at wide receiver will probably increase. They didn't need to today because it's the first day, but they'll probably increase. What you're saying about Cody, I mean, you're, you know, you're kind of the gold standard as an O-line coach, I mean, before you became a head coach. So are you saying there's some things he does better than you, and does he sort of remind you of a younger version of yourself? Oh, no. I, I mean, at his age, I was at uh, – I was either at Hutchinson Junior College, or, I mean, he, he passed the old man a long time ago. Uh, no, I tell you what Cody does well. He's good with the kids. He, he's a good teacher. Uh, he's very confident about what he teaches. Cody wasn't – he wasn't away from me long enough to go to every guru clinic in the world and decide that they had a better answer than we did. I like that about Cody. He believes in what we were teaching when he was a GA, and he does it exactly like I do. The, the only thing is is that his – when guys are moving on him, he makes them move. It seems like they're moving sideways and not up the field. So I keep saying second step. I'm not for sure if we don't drop a little bit deeper on our first step, especially on outside zone, than what I taught. And I think, you know, I think he opens his shoulders up a little bit more than what I taught. And uh, sometimes that's, that's great if they move. If they don't, sometimes you can get a little knockback. But our backs are back behind the quarterback, so you've seen us make many, many yards on outside zone over here, and it's cut up the backside a gap and split it. You know, um, so we're not quite as worried about penetration on the front side because we're not dotted the eye. It's backside, so he therefore he can cut up faster. Uh, a lot of times when you're when you're in the eye or dotted behind the quarterback. You have to hit the ball front side. And uh, I think there's a little bit of combination of why we're a little bit better there than than what I was. I wanted to follow up on your lines. Can, can you assess the one and two lines today? And, and how much are you able to assess when they're not wearing pads in these first week? Well, a lot. I mean, you're looking at footwork, technique, want to, pad level, all those type of different things. Uh, and I had a good day, you know, four of the five came back from last year, and then Jones came in there. I thought uh, Devin Manuel had a good day. I thought, um, uh, to, to be honest with you, Josh Street had a good day, you know, with Henderson being out at center. Uh, in life, you can either look – or in coaching, you can either look at an injury as a negative or as a positive. We're, we're, he's going to come back. Henderson's going to come back. But this is, allows us to uh, find another center that we believe in and, and you know, you know, I believe that's the most important uh, spot uh, on the offensive line. Basically, the second most important spot on the offense uh, because he handles the ball every snap. Uh, so I don't know if I answered your question, but did I? Yeah. Wilson had a good day. You said some other receivers did too. Who stood out? Who did stuff? Other touchdowns and stuff. Well, Matt Landers, you know, he, he's fast and big. And he, he had he had some really nice catches out there. Hazelwood, I'm not sure Hazelwood caught, didn't catch more balls a day than he did the entire last spring. I told him that walking off the 
failed today. He had a, he had a really nice day. And, you know, there's a difference, too, when you're in, in, you know, spiders and people aren't knocking the heck out of you. You know, you're going to catch a few more balls than what you would if it was a physical, all-out defensive practice. He – he was a five-star in high school, and even though he led OU in catches and led OU in touchdown receptions, still, maybe he—is there a chance? That maybe he feels like he's still got to. I mean, uh, do more. Uh, you, you have to ask him. He's a hundred percent that he thinks from where he was in high school to what he's done so far in college is not acceptable to him, and uh, and I think I think he'll have a really good year. I think he's. You know, got a lot of want to and a lot of things in his mind that he needs to prove. You'll have to ask him, but that's how I feel about it. Partners at Bet Online continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's Wimbledon Finals, Major League Baseball, the latest fighting news, and even next season's early NFL futures. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code BLEAV. That's B L E A V to get the bonus and get into the action. Bet online where the game starts.